CataractCoach.com. Torque eyewall technique in smaller pupil cases. Let me show you the method that we can use to see those torque lens marks even when the pupil is significantly smaller than the optic. This is a patient who takes Flomax, Tamsulosa, and Floppy Iris Syndrome. This is about the best dilation we've had throughout the case for this patient. It's otherwise a routine cataract case here. Cleaning up the posterior capsule, getting all the cortex out, that looks pretty clean. Now the pupil is going to come down smaller than this. We were able to make a nice five millimeter round central capsular rexus, and that's going to help, of course, to hold our toric lens in the correct position. In this patient, this is a right eye, and we're operating temporally, and then you can see a little bit of that iris prolapse there. We're making the incision here exactly at the 180 degree meridian, and there's a very small little ink mark nasally there at the opposite 180. So here's filling the capsular bag with viscoelastic. There's the edge of the capsular rexus. That looks great. Let's put the lens in. And here comes a single piece acrylic lens. It's a toric lens. This toric lens has about two diopters of cylinder correction in order to give patient, the patient the ideal post-op outcome of Plano. That trailing haptic was misloaded, so we'll just put that in manually. We'll ensure that the whole thing goes in the capsular bag. There at the haptic optic junction, you can see those three dots indicating the toric axis. And so we'll get that lens in the capsular bag. Of course, very important to make sure this entire lens goes in the capsular bag. And we can see the pupils come down quite a bit so far. We're going to rotate the lens gently clockwise, leaving it about one clock hour before the ideal orientation. And now we still have to remove the viscoelastic from the eye, and very important you must remove all viscoelastic from behind the optic. So we'll lift up the lens here, go behind the optic, and really give it a good vacuuming. We want to make sure there's no viscoelastic at all. You want the optic to be directly against the posterior capsule, especially this acrylic material tends to be a little tacky, and that'll help keep the torque lens in the exact place that you want it, prevent any post-op rotations. So now using the chopper here, the foot pedal's on position one. The IA probe is used just for irrigation now. And the chopper is being used to lift the iris and check the position of those torque marks, as well as to rotate the lens. So slowly by slowly, we rotate it and then just keep checking for the position. We can also see that the eye while optic is nicely underneath the capsular axis. So looking there nasally, we're pretty close. It needs just a little more rotation. Sub-incisionally as well, it looks like it needs a little more rotation to be perfectly lined up with the incision. And then again, lifting up the iris, that's the technique, using the chopper to slowly lift up the iris and then use the same chopper to rotate the lens little by little. Now, if you over-rotate it, you're gonna, you can't go backwards. This lens only rotates clockwise, so you'll have to go around nearly another 180 degrees. So again, now just confirming our positioning. The technique here is using that chopper. Now the patient has just topical anesthesia plus intracameral lidocaine. And now we can see nasally that torque mark on the lens is beautifully lined up with that very faint torque mark right there at the limbus. So this lens is in now great position. We're gonna seal up the main incision, a little bit of stromal hydration back and forth. Notice how we don't distort the incision. You don't make those two big white pockets up against the lateral edges of the incision. We want just enough hydration. And since a little bit more of a sweep here, just to make sure, just to double the double check, looking with the cannula lifting up the iris, and I'm sure this lens is in great position. This patient's gonna have a beautiful refractive outcome, and we didn't need to use iris hooks, a pupil ring, or any other device, despite the relatively small pupil. Checking the incision here at the end, making sure it's absolutely watertight, Remember, in a torque lens case, if there's any leakage, that lens can rotate. Check out our teaching website, cataractcoach.com. We have a lot of great material. Everything can be searched by category or by keyword. You'll learn a lot, and it's a lot easier to use than just watching YouTube videos.